Good morning, this is Sharon from the House of Prayer. Only a few people on earth have ever seen this. Today I want to discuss one verse. When the prophet Isaiah saw into the spirit world, in Isaiah chapter 6 verse 1, and the year that King Uzziah died, I saw also the Lord sitting upon a throne, high and lifted up, and his train filled the temple. The prophet Isaiah was talking of what he saw. There are different verses of the Bible that talk about the appearance of God on his throne. I have read several of them, and I have not seen one of them that says the glory of God is not great, or just describes the glory of God as any old thing. The way God always appears is always something that is always compared to something great. John saw the same throne in the book of Revelation. Revelation chapter 4 verse 3. And he that sat was to look upon like a jasper and a, sar and a sardine stone. And there was a rainbow round about the throne and sight unto like an emerald. And sight like unto an emerald. Also in the Old Testament, God also appeared before the children of Israel. In his glory, in Exodus 24, verse 17, And the sight of the glory of God was like devouring fire on the top of the mountain in the eyes of the children of Israel. When God appeared to the children of Israel, his voice was like a trumpet and they could see thunder. This made them afraid, and they could not face God. Exodus twenty eighteen and 19. And all the people saw the thundering and the lightning and the noise of the trumpet and the mountains smoking. And when the people saw it, they removed and stood afar off. And they said unto Moses, Speak thou with us, and we will hear but let not God speak with us, lest we die. Israel was about to see God on his throne and the angels that surrounded his throne. He saw everything about God. After reading Isaiah 6, chapter 1 carefully, I realized the first thing that caught the attention of Isaiah was the one who was sitting on the throne. After talking about the person who he saw on the throne, he went ahead to explain the other things that he saw. Isaiah chapter 6 verse 2. Above it stood the seraphims. Each one had six wings and twain covered his face. And with twain he covered his feet. And with twain he did fly. Clearly, there are other things around the throne. The Bible did not say anything that was being shown to Isaiah, one after the other. It wasn't a sequential showing. This means that everything came to him at once, at a time. What caught his eye was the throne and the one who was sitting on the throne. This means that this throne is very special. This is not something that you can just ignore. Everything else was secondary, except for the one who was sitting on the throne. For all we know, the prophet Isaiah could have spent a lot of time admiring that throne and the one who was sitting on the throne. We can't say a throne is not a seat occupied by an exalted person. This means the person who was on the throne has the power to make anything in their kingdom. If anyone must stand in the presence of the person sitting on the throne, they must stand with the utmost respect and approach with respect. Anything that anyone who sits on the throne says is final and no other 
power within that kingdom can go against it. Not everyone can sit on the throne. Only the person who has the authority in a place or kingdom can sit on that throne. Only a ruler can sit on that throne. The throne that Isaiah saw is the throne of the whole universe. Everything in this universe and this world revolves around the throne of God. That's why his eyes were firstly drawn to it. Not to the angels, not to everything else, but his eyes were drawn to the one sitting on the throne. Secondly, Isaiah saw him high and lifted up. If we are going to talk about the greatness of God as something that we can study for 10,000 years and still we won't reach the end of it. When we say God is great, it's not just a small phrase or an ordinary phrase. It's a big phrase. There is nothing that we can compare to the greatness of God. He is highly exalted. He rules in the affairs of men. He knows everything. We talked about how the throne of God is great. What makes the throne of God great is the one who sits on the throne, and that is God Almighty. And we see the name God Almighty in the Bible, and you know what that tells me? That tells me that there is no one higher than him. That tells me there is no one greater than him. That tells me his almighty, all-knowing God. In First Chronicles chapter 29, verse 11, Thine, O Lord, is the greatest and the power and the glory and the victory and the majesty. For all that is in heaven and in the earth is thine. Thine is the kingdom, O Lord, and thou art exalted as head above all. The greatness of God surpasses the universe. If men cannot understand the whole mystery of the universe, what makes them think they can understand the God that made it? The one who sets everything in motion from the beginning of time. Everything that moves is because of him. Lightning flashes at his command. Rainfall comes and goes at his decree. He is completely in control at all times. The CEO of the universe. He is large and in charge. The king of all kings. The lord of all lords. The ruler and creator. Truly, God is the greatest. The beginning of every Christian. That is born again is to see him. The longing for believers is to meet their maker. To meet the God that they could have come to know in this life. For many years I have always thought about this question. What will the first words I say to God when I see him? This is a question I have spent a lot of time thinking about. The truth is we all know this world was created by the intelligent designer and we all know that you and i also were created by an intelligent designer we are not descendants of monkeys we are not accidental we are here we are not here by chance but an intelligent designer intentionally created us and we all know one day we will meet him we all know one day we will meet God. But what will we say to him when we finally meet him? I believe that when we meet God, I believe the day when we see God, we will all say three words. You may be thinking the first three words we will say is, I love you. We do love him. We love God. But I don't think... That is the first three words we will say to him. I believe the first words we will say to God can be found sprinkled throughout the pages out of this Bible. 
But let us go to the book of Revelation and enter into the throne room of heaven. In Revelation 4, we enter the center of the universe. Everything, everywhere revolves around this room. The throne room of heaven. On the island of Patmos, John was called up in the spirit, and he ascended to the third heaven, and he beheld a throne, and there was the one who sat on the throne, the one who was from everlasting to everlasting, the one who was from age to age, the one who sat on the throne is the ancient of days, the one who sat on the throne is everything there is. He is everything there ever was, and he is everything that ever will be. Everything started with him, and it will end with him. The Almighty, the All-Powerful, All-Knowing God, and the one who sat on the throne. He was like a jasper, and he saw the stone in appearance, and there was a rainbow around the throne in appearance, like an emerald. Around the throne there were twenty-four thrones, and on the thrones I saw twenty-four elders sitting clothed in white robes, and they had crowns of gold on their heads. And from there the throne proceeded lightning, thunder, and voices. Seven lamps of fire were burning before the throne, which are the seven spirits of God. You and I one day will see this room but what will we say when we see him what will who sits on the throne that is surrounded by four living creatures full of eyes in front and back i believe the first three words we say is found in verse eight Each of the four living creatures has six wings and was covered in eyes all around, even under his wings. Day and night, they never stopped saying, Holy, holy, holy. There you have it. You have angels innumerable crying out, Holy, holy, holy. You have angels, seraphims on one side crying out, Holy, holy, holy. And behind me, my brother, believe me, my sister, when you and I lay our eyes on him, we will cry out, holy, 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 too. Hallelujah. Amen.